What's happening good people? Welcome to Where's His Watch Room. As you've seen, we are going to be reviewing the Roma Deep Sea 200. Now this was kindly sent in to the channel by the watch shop. Does not have to go back, but you guys know that doesn't affect my opinion. You can find a link down in the description. Now watch shop are a massive online retailer based in the UK. You know they have watches like this, they're adding new brands all the time. Great customer service. Always have uh, you know good prices, price matching on select models, and uh, you know all uh, that other good stuff too. So again, link in the description. So yeah, Roma are a new brand to me and uh, new to the channel. So they were founded in 1888, which is a long time. And uh, you know they've got quite a few uh, different watches. They've got uh, this. They've got a Deep Sea 300, and uh, you know a few others as well. Uh, if you don't like the colorway of this one, which I really do, by the way. Uh, they do uh, quite a variety of different ones as well, just to, you know, get that out of the way. So again, you know, you can you know, see more information in the description. So let's uh, start off, you know, getting all the sizes and everything out of the way, and then we'll dive in, no pun intended, and uh, get the review done. So the diameter is quite a large one, actually. It's 43 millimetres. That log to log is 50, but you can see, you know, we do get a bit of downturn, so... It's uh, not as bad. Uh, diameter with a crown is 47 and a half. So it's again, pretty big. Male end link to male end link is, is big. It's 55.3. Uh, but again, you know, they uh, do curve quite a fair bit. So, you know, just don't let that quite put you off and, you know, wait until you see how it wears. The thickness is actually yeah, pretty respectable at 11.2, which I think is really good. And the crown is a good size at 6.8. So we have a uh, sapphire crystal, which is always nice to see. Full stainless steel throughout. 200 meters water resistance. A screw down crown and case back. And what's even more impressive, a seven year guarantee. So uh, last but not least, we have this bezel. Now this is a uh, unidirectional bezel. And uh, I think someone uh, in the unboxing said that it's a little bit akin to something that Tag Heuer does. But I do like it, you know, it's something a little bit different. So it's got a uh, brushed steel finish. And then we've got these uh, high polished sort of accents all the way around, which act as markers as well. Little loom pip at the 12, and then, uh, you know, we're an engraved, you know, 10, 20, 30, and so on and so forth. So it is a timing bezel, uh, but obviously it's not the uh, most comprehensive because we don't have any minute markings. As for usability, though, it really does fall short. I mean, uh, the bezel grip is slippy. It's high polish, and there's just not, not enough sort of grip or nailing on it. And it's, it's very, very slippery. I mean, sometimes you can get a good purchase if you grab, you know, one of these accents. You can get a good uh, good grip there. But then your fingers just slip off it because it's, it's polished. And, yeah, it's it's got a nice action. It feels solid. It feels robust. It's just very, very slippery. So moving in to the dial, and we have a uh, wave form dial that you'll often see on uh, some Omegas. Now, this is not a homage. But that dial is very akin to the Seamaster. Again, not a copy, you know, it's just inspired by. And we actually do have a little bit of depth to the dial, which is always nice to see. So there is a subtle little groove. It's not as deep as uh, you get on an Omega, uh, but it does uh, have a nice little bit of depth. Uh, we've got also more depth with those applied indices. So we've got a uh, circle at the 12, 3, six and the nine and then these um sort of tapered um batons um everywhere else date window at the six o'clock and i'm actually not liking this one to be fair usually i don't mind six o'clock date windows but i think it just sits a little bit too high into the dial above um the uh, six o'clock while we're on there we've got a uh, deep sea 200 in orange 20 uh, atm which is 200 meters and sapphire Little bit of a complaint about that as well. The uh, deep sea text doesn't match the uh, accent on uh, the second hand. Now, what they should have done is match them because now it just looks weird because there's two different colors and I just think they don't really complement each other all that well. And I think they should have done an orange tip there and it just tied it in a little bit better. 
Under the 12, we have Roma 1888 applied, and it's very nicely applied to dial color. Very nice. It's got a uh, sort of fume style, but it's got a bit of a sunburst kick to it as well. So it starts off white in the center and then graduates into a darker gray. And again, you know, we've got that little bit of a sunburst too. It's a very, very lovely looking dial. Sides, you know, are, uh, are very nice. Really slender, nice downturn to those lugs. Horizontal brushing and a uh, nice high polish chamfered edge. The finishing is superb. It's very satinized, very smooth, and some clean transitions too. Those lugs, you can see we've got a really deep chamfer on them again. Nicely brushed, curved, very, very nice. I do love the profile of it. This side, you know, we've got a uh, sign crown, and again, I've got another little bit of a complaint there. The logo, it just doesn't match. If you look at the uh, Roma branding, and then the brand in there, it just doesn't fit. I think they should have done like 1888, uh, maybe subtly engraved would have looked a little bit better. But yeah, this it just doesn't work. It's nice, good size, but yeah, it doesn't work. Crown guards as well, just to give it a little bit of protection. So yeah, it's really lovely profile, but yeah, it's a uh, few little elements that I would probably change. Onto the case back, it's actually uh, all high polish. You can see we've got a little bit of decoration work in the uh, center. So 1888 Roma, Switzerland. Their logo does appear on the case pack, so that could be why it ties in there, but I'm just not a huge fan. Deep sea and then some specifications around there. So moving on to the uh, bracelet. And again, I've got a little bit of a complaint. For one, the polished um, mid-links. I just... Um, I don't like them on dive washers. I mean, I don't mind a little bit of high polishing, you know, as an accent, you know, when it's tastefully done, but that is just, it's just too much for me. I also, uh, not a huge fan of, you know, this male end link. It doesn't sort of flow with the lugs and it just sticks out a little bit too much. So that's another little bit of a thing I uh, noticed. Female end links though would definitely improve that some and uh, you know take that male end link length down as well. The finishing though is really nice. We've got really good uh, polishing, really good brushing. We've got full uh, you know solid links for that side. Just push pins holding it together, which is a little bit of a shame. It's not screw link. Solid end links you can just see right there. And then another bugbear for me on a dive watch, a butterfly clasp. This really was crying out for a proper clasp. Maybe not even as far as, you know, like a diver's extension or anything, just a proper milled clasp would be so much better. Give it some micro adjust and, you know, you'd be well away and it would make it a much, uh, you know, more quality feeling product and also more usable as well, which we'll come on to later. We do have a little bit of branding here though, which is a nice touch. And it's, you know, it's high polish, which is, you know, not the best finish. A little bit of brushing on the accent but yeah it's definitely the cheapest looking part of the whole watch and i think it could have been you know done a bit better for its price point to be fair so what i'm gonna do is pop it on wrist and show you how it wears All right guys so here it is on my six inch wrist and do you know what it is a little bit big i'm, I'm gonna really you know just put that right out there i think the 43 diameter because of the case shape, it doesn't seem to be all that bothersome. Um, but it's just the uh, male end links that really do uh, make this one wear bigger. You can just see how it sort of juts out the bracelet there and, and uh, at this side. And it does uh, overhang quite a fair bit. But what I will say is... You know, this profile that the watch has got, it's very nice. It hugs really well. I do get a bit of a gap at this side, but that is just because the lug-to-lug -lug is on the long side for me. So if you've got wrist size similar to mine, I probably would say maybe get this one on something different or, you know, look elsewhere if this really bothers you. But yeah, it is a nice, a nice look. I think it looks nice on wrist if you had the right wrist size for it. I just don't. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too big for me. Now, I do get a pretty decent fit though. You know, you can see it fits and uh, conforms really well to my wrist. So I've got no real major complaints in the comfort front. It just looks a little bit too uh, big 
on wrist, unfortunately. Next up, guys, is, of course, the movement. So this is using a Ronda 515, which is a Swiss quartz. It has one dual, a four-year battery life. It uses a 371 cell battery. The accuracy is negative 10 to plus 20 seconds per month. It also has some um, other cool features too. So it has shock resistance, which is NIHS 91-10. Not really sure what level that is, but it does have upgraded shock resistance, which is nice to see. It's also got upgraded anti-magnetic properties and it's 18.80E. Again, I'm not really sure how good that is on the, you know, the scheme of things or the scale, but it's definitely superior to, you know, a more affordable entry level quartz. So that's nice to see, you know, that they've um, gone with a movement that's a little bit better than just Ronda's entry level stuff. We do have a few little problems though. It misses its markers. Now, it's not like massive, it doesn't hit in between, it just ever so slightly misses them. And I know that uh, does get on a lot of guys' nerves. It doesn't really bother me so much as it used to, but yeah, it does miss its markers, unfortunately. So let's uh, talk about how this one works and how it uses. So the crown, you know, is very, very nice. Even with the crown guards, very nice and easy to get a hold of. Uh, pull it out all the way to adjust your time. And I have noticed, this crown is a little bit loose and wobbly feeling. Now, I know that is uh, a design feature on some watches. I know Vostok's have this feature where it, uh, the crown is a little bit loose and wobbly feeling, and it's supposed to uh, protect the stem. Now, I am not a huge fan of it. I think it feels just not very reassuring is the best word I can put it. And yeah, it's just, you can just see the wobble and I don't know, it just doesn't feel quite right. Uh, yeah, so uh, take that as you will. Uh, one push in, obviously, you know, you can do um, do your date, and we do have a uh, quick set date, very, very quick set. I mean, literally half a turn, and it's just like all the way done. So, yeah, that's really nice to see. So, uh, it's a nice, smooth feeling movement in action. You know, there's no horrible, bumpy, gritty, horrible feedback to it. It is buttery smooth. It's just this crown, guys. It's, um, yeah, it's not inspiring much confidence. So yeah, I will say that. Uh, Re-engagement can be a bit bothersome sometimes. You can see, look, it's just popped back out. Doesn't always thread. It seems to be a little bit bouncer and it just sort of has a bit of trouble catching onto the thread sometimes. So yeah, it's not the best in use, let's just say. Final, uh, you know, stop on this review tour is the loom. And we do have loomed hands and indices and the loom is good. It's not amazing, it's not gonna knock your socks off, it's not Seiko good, it's not Citizen good, but it is pretty good. I'm not entirely sure on the compound, I did look on the manufacturer's website, but I couldn't see what compound they are using. So it's a little bit hard, uh, well, to tell you which one it is, cause I can't find the information. Uh, but anyway, it is good, it's got, you know, decent staying power, decent brightness, but it's definitely, like I said, not Seiko, Citizen, you know, uh, that level good. Now, as a whole, what do we think of this watch? Well, for its price tag of 299 retail, uh, 224 if you use the code provided by the watch shop, uh, then it's a it's a bit hard sell. 224 I think is a much more uh, reasonable price point for it, in my opinion. It's definitely got a lot of good points. The finishing on the case is really nice. The case itself is really good. You know, the bezel looks nice and it's a good looking watch. A few little design issues on this one, but there's other colors like I mentioned. You know, this bracelet could do with a bit of an upgrade, especially in the clasp department. The loom, I think, you know, is pretty fair. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. Uh, so yeah, 299 retail, no, I wouldn't say it's worth it. 224, I'd say that's definitely a better price but there is still room for improvement in my opinion. So what do you guys think? Do you think this one is a good price or do you think it is a little bit too expensive? Let me know. Thanks for watching, have a good one. If you wanna see more content on the channel, click the links you can see right now. Like the video if you enjoyed it, hit that bell so you don't miss any future content and of course, feel free to subscribe if you want to stay in touch with the channel. Thanks very much.
Have a good one.